good morning students and welcome to the third online class of computer science this is me your subject teacher ms farwa let's begin with the continuation of chapter number 1 problem solving in today's lecture we will be discussing about flow charts and algorithms the two techniques that are used to solve problem in detail let's have a look at the definition of flow chart a flow chart is a type of diagram that represents a work flow or process a flow chart can also be defined as a diagrammatic representation of an algorithm which is a step by step approach used to solve a task the flow chart shows the steps as boxes of various kinds and their order by connecting the boxes with arrows this diagrammatic representation illustrates a solution model to a given problem flow charts are used in analyzing designing documenting or managing a process or program in various kinds flow charts play a very important role when it comes to solving a problem sometimes it is more effective and easier to present something visually than words that is the essence of what flow charts do for us when we use it for solving difficult problems flow charts can explain highly difficult problems with symbols and text which are a lot easier to comprehend and digest quickly by a wider audience there are few requirements for drawing a flow chart in a flow chart we use input output decision making and processing these concepts are described in the following let's have a look at the first requirement that is of the inputs input means taking data from the user it is very important to know how many and what type of inputs are required the second requirement is of processing a flow chart also contains processing steps the processing steps are used for performing calculations and storing the results of calculations these may include increasing or decreasing a value adding multiplying or dividing two values etc the third requirement is one of the very major requirements that is of decision making which is used to determine whether a statement is true or false and taking appropriate steps accordingly and the last requirement is the outputs outputs are used to display information and usually this information exhibits the processed results flow charts explain a process clearly through symbols and text they use special shapes to represent different types of actions or steps in a process lines and arrows show the flow of steps have a look at the table given in front of you the very first symbol is a kind of elongated oval symbol which represents the starting and ending of a flow chart then all the processing is entered using a symbol of a rectangle thirdly a parallelogram represents the input and output of a program then for making the decisions and making the branching a diamond symbol is used then this circle represents the connectors then we have a symbol which represents off page and on page connectors then arrows which are used to represent the flow lines then there is a symbol which defines the processes used in functions and subroutines and the last one is used to enter the remarks the comments here are a few guidelines for drawing a flow chart in drawing a flow chart all necessary requirements should be listed in a very logical order the flow chart should be clear neat and easy to follow there should not be any uncertainty in understanding the flow chart the usual direction of the flow chart is from top to bottom or left to right only one flow line should come out of the process symbol here is an example of a flow chart let's have a look at this example in detail 
This flowchart shows you the conversion of Celsius to Fahrenheit temperature. This flowchart that after starting, a computer user provides some numeric data which is stored in computer memory with the name Celsius. In the next step, the result is computed by applying the formula to convert the given Celsius temperature to Fahrenheit temperature. The result is stored with name Fahrenheit. The value stored with name Fahrenheit is then displayed by using some output device. Next, the flowchart ends. Here is an another example which is used to determine whether a given number is odd or even. In this flowchart, after the starting step, a numeric value is taken from a user and stored in computer memory with name n. Then, this value is divided by 2 and remainder is stored in memory with name rem. To calculate remainder, mod function is applied. We perform a conditional operation to check whether n is completely divisible by 2 or not. This is done by comparing the value of rem with 0. If rem is 0, the conditional operation gives a true value. It means that n is even because it is completely divisible by 2. On the other hand, if rem is not 0, the conditional operation gives a false value. It means that n is odd. Let's move to the second technique that is used to solve a problem, algorithm. What is an algorithm? Probably the best way to understand an algorithm is to think of it as a recipe. An algorithm is a finite list of instructions most often used in solving problems or performing tasks. Here is a strategy for developing an effective algorithm and this strategy involves three basic steps. The very first step is the investigation. Investigation of the processes, major decisions, repetitions and variables. Step number two involves preliminary algorithm, which means to devise a high level general algorithm step through the algorithm. Meaning, does this walkthrough reveal any major problem? If it does, then please correct the problem. And the third step involves the refinement of the algorithm. To incorporate any refinements indicated in step number two to group together processes and variables where appropriate and then to test the algorithm again by stepping through it. Let's have a look at an example of an algorithm. Here you have to make tea in your house. An initial attempt at an algorithm might be step number one to put leaves in pot, step number two boil water. Step number 3. Add water to pot. Step number 4. Wait 5 minutes. Step number 5. Pour tea into cups. If you have a look at these 5 steps, these are very basic, very random instructions that anybody can give it to you or you can instruct to anyone if you want to have a cup of tea, right? But these five steps can be written in more detail in order to make your algorithm work more effectively. So let's have a look at the first refinement. These steps are probably not detailed enough to make tea. We therefore refine each step into a sequence of further simpler steps. Step number one, which is to put tea leaves in pot, can be defined to 1.1 is to open the box of tea. 1.2, extract one spoonful of tea leaves. 1.3, put spoonful into pot. 1.4, close box of tea. So from here, you can have an idea how refined and effective algorithm can be written. Move to step number two, boil water. It might be refined to fill kettle with water, switch on kettle, 
wait until water is boiled switch off kettle now why are we not going to refine step number 3 and 4 because they are quite more efficient and enough to explain the algorithm right now in the current situation so let's move to step number 5 that is to pour tea into cup it might be refined to pour tea from pot into cup what is the role of algorithm when it comes to solving a problem so an algorithm has a vital role in problem solving as it provides a step by step guide to the problem solver it is a complete description of the solution here is a formulation of an algorithm few keywords that are going to represent few of the meanings that we can use while we are representing an algorithm have a look at the first one the starting point it is the starting point of an algorithm every algorithm must have one starting means one entry point then is the output which is used to get input from a user and store it in computer memory with some name like we have seen in the previous two examples then to set it is used to give name to data in computer memory it is also used to update the value of existing data if and else which are two conditional statements like we have seen one in the previous example where we were to find out if the number is even or odd so it is used to check the condition for example the condition like if a is less than b a condition is evaluated as true or false next is the go to it is used to transfer control to a certain step of an algorithm it is usually required in loops output it is used to display values the desired results then stop it is the termination point means it is the ending point of an algorithm here are few examples of an algorithm look at the first one where you have to find the sum product and average of the five given numbers so as this is an algorithm so you will go step wise in order to find the sum product and average of the given five numbers here you have a starting point then in step number 2 you will give the input this is the numbers like n z n here is representing numbers 0 1 2 3 4 step number 3 is to set sum to n0 plus n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 in order to find the product you will multiply then to find the average you will put the formula of finding an average total number divided by 5 as you have to find the average of five given numbers then step number 6 involves the output of sum product an average because we were to find out the sum of these five numbers the sum, product of these five numbers and the average of these five and step number 7 is the ending of this algorithm example number 2 to display the larger one out of the three given so look at the following steps first you will start then you will input then you will set your numbers then you will put a condition whether it is smaller than or larger than then step number 6 involves the output and then the ending if you remember the notations keywords you will focus that in these steps also they play a very important role so you have the starting then you have the input then you have set then you put if or else where you have to check the condition then go to then output and then you now let's talk about the efficiency of an algorithm there can be more than one algorithms to solve the same problem which one is better depends upon the efficiency of the available solution algorithms efficiency of an algorithm is measured on the two metrics 
First one is number of steps. An algorithm is considered more efficient if it takes less number of steps to reach the results. Number two, space used in computer memory. We have observed in algorithms that some data is stored in computer memory which is later used to give results. An algorithm using less space in computer memory is considered more efficient with respect to memory space. It is quite possible that one algorithm takes less space in memory and has more number of steps whereas the other algorithm takes more memory and has less number of steps. In this case, there is a trade-off between numbers of steps and the consumed memory. The designer can take the decisions according to the requirements. Now let's talk about the difference between an algorithm and flowcharts. In programming, the solution to a problem is first elucidated in the form of algorithm which contains sequential steps for the solution. For the programmer convenience, the two forms are evolved to express the algorithm that is a flowchart. A flowchart is constructed with the help of various symbols and provides more understandability to the algorithm. The algorithm and flowcharts are the two sides of the same coin and dependent terms. So difference between an algorithm and a flowchart is just like the difference between a story and a movie. As we have studied that a flowchart is a graphical representation of the process to solve a problem, but an algorithm writes the same steps in a human understandable language. Here is a comparison chart between algorithm and flowchart depending on few of the terms. Have a look at the basic. In algorithm, it includes sequence of steps which depicts the procedure of the solution whereas in flowchart, an information diagram made up of different shapes show the data flow. Then comes the comprehensibility. In algorithm, it is hard to understand but in flowcharts, it is easily interpreted. Then comes the usage. In algorithm, you use text whereas in flowcharts you use symbols. Then comes the implementation. While writing an algorithm, no rules are employed, whereas in flowcharts predefined rules are implemented. Then comes to the process of debugging, the process of removing errors. In algorithm, it is easier to debug the problem, whereas in flowcharts, it is dif difficult to debug the problem. Then comes the ease of construction, the design. In algorithms, it is perplexing, whereas in flowcharts, it is simple. Here are few of the advantages and disadvantages of flowcharts. Flowcharts are easy to draw, easy to understand problem solving, easy to identify errors if any, and easy to observe any flow from one step to another. Whereas the disadvantages of a flowchart includes more time is required to draw a flowchart, modifying a flowchart is not very easy every time. It is not suitable for very large problems. Let's have a look at the advantages of an algorithm. They are very easy to write. Techniques to write an algorithm are easy to understand. To solve large problems, algorithms are very helpful, whereas algorithms on the other side have few of the disadvantages as well. Modifying an existing algorithm is not very easy every time. Showing the flow from one step to another is not very easy. And usage of the go-to not notation makes it difficult to identify errors. Thank you very much.